Okay. Now officially welcome everyone. And we are just so pleased to be um, facilitating a conversation called Share the Love, OER and Peer Mentoring on Valentine's Day with such distinguished colleagues who are uh, the, uh, the pinnacle of peer men mentoring. And uh, I can't wait to, to have this conversation. So welcome everybody. If you haven't done so, I'd like to introduce yourself in the chat, please go ahead. We'll, we'll have a, a turn for uh, our presenters to introduce ourselves. And then we'll turn to, uh, I will give a short overview of the Go Open Network, if you're not familiar, just some background on that. Then we'll spend most of the time with a spotlight on our speakers and, and hearing the, the uh, important things that are going on in Michigan and the US Virgin Islands, uh, very distinct areas, but united in their commitment to OER and uh, to peer mentoring. So that's really what's stimulated this, this, the idea for this conversation. And then we'll have time to uh, have Q&A here from, from all of you. I'll pass it to Gina and Yvette, make sure you're unmuted. And Gina, why don't you start the introductions? Sounds good. Thank you, Amy. Um, and thank you for having um, me today. I appreciate the chance to brag about my colleague a little bit and explain kind of our journey. I think it's going to be fun. Um, so I'm Gina Loveless. I work at the Michigan Department of Education. A lot of my responsibilities fall around OER, open licensing, um, educating our K-12 districts, as well as internal partners. Um, so I you can't forget your internal folks, um, which is something that's hard to catch them sometimes. And I also um, do some digital literacy work and uh, whatever's thrown at me, you know how that goes, other things as a sign. So that's me, Yvette. Thank you. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, great to be here to share this journey um, on which Gina and I have found ourselves. Um, it's been a great journey and um, we want to bring you along because now you become part of our journey as well. I'm Yvette McMahon Arnold. I work at the State Office of Curriculum and Instruction in the Virgin Islands Department of Education. State Office of Curriculum and Instruction. Um, Gina indicated that she does everything that whatever is thrown at her. I think I'm pretty much much of that. I sometimes joke and say that I do everything except assessment. <laughs> everything else comes my way. But um, specifically, I work with um, standards as well as curriculum development, facilitate that work primarily with um, do a lot of work with coordinators and lead teachers who the coordinators recommend. I work on the Striving Readers Grant, so with a heavy focus on literacy, working also on uh, supporting certification for teachers who require early childhood certification and you name it, whatever else, but definitely working on the microsite to build this microsite, to see it grow and to continue this special relationship with Gina. So that's me. Thank you, Yvette and Gina. It's just a, such a pleasure to be sharing this, uh, this moment in time around OER on Valentine's Day. So if you're just joining us and you are comfortable putting uh, a hello in the chat where you're from and your affiliation, your name, go right ahead. I'm Amy Godwin. I'm senior advisor at ISCME. If you're not familiar with ISCME, it's the Institute for the Study of Knowledge Management and Education based in Northern California. We're a, a global nonprofit and work uh, around the world, but nationally with, um, with states and districts with the Go Open Network. We uh, have the goal to make learning environments more participatory, equitable, and open, and bring, we're research-based and bring uh, um, social science and information science together in the development of OER Commons, a digital public library and collaboration 
environment and offer custom libraries for those interested in that and bringing their educators into OER practice. And we work to facilitate communities of practice like this so that uh, others can build their skills and share knowledge around OER. A little overview of the Go Open Network is that it has started in 2015. And for more than six years, it was a, a federal initiative led by the Department of Ed's Office of Ed Tech. And it uh, brought states and districts into a commitment to OER, which was really great. And ISKME had the opportunity to join as a partner in 2018 to help the department facilitate the network. And uh, at the beginning, almost about a year ago, uh, the department stepped away from a federal initiative for K-12 OER and handed the baton kindly to, to ISKME to, to build the network uh, from the ground up as a community-led organization. When we started a steering committee and set our goals to continue around knowledge sharing, but also to diversify uh, the leadership and uh, change the governance. So there were no uh, less barriers for people to, to enter and start to benefit from being in a, a community of practice together. We surveyed the uh, existing members last fall and the priorities that emerged is that People really wanted a centralized place to share. And so we have launched the Go Open Hub on OER Commons for anyone to join. We really removed barriers for membership that all you have to do is go to that hub and join the member group. And then you're a member of Go Open as well as of the hub tool. Uh, we specialize in uh, lifting up uh, professional learning opportunities like having this webinar series and uh, also taking on policy action. Where can K-12 education benefit from OER across uh, the policy spectrum and advocate that states, districts, and others adopt OER into, into their strategies? Some of you uh, are probably very immersed in the OER space. Others may be new to it. And I'll just briefly say that uh, OER is a, a tool of empowerment for all educators. It's, it, it's built with equity in mind to make materials uh, available to everyone without barriers, uh, financial, geographic, learning needs, disabilities, and other circumstances that might prevent access and use to high quality curriculum. OER are low or no cost materials that remain available free forever uh, for anyone to use. And we, uh, we really do want to support this, this uh, idea that even though they're no or low cost, states and districts also really need to invest in OER implementation that it's not a no cost uh, in, uh, initiative in your state or district to take on OER. It really involves um, a systematic approach and an investment in staff and staff skills. Once the uh, educators and staff are, are part of the OER movement, we see that educators have more investment in the curriculum and that not only uh, are costs uh, reduced, but uh, students are actually doing better. And there's research on that. Uh, in the process of using OER, educators can more easily adapt materials, which includes contextualizing them to their local environment and personalizing them to meet students' needs. And as a result, students really can see themselves reflected in their learning and, and become more engaged. So with that introduction, I will pass to my esteemed colleagues, Gina and Yvette, to talk about their, their mentoring relationship and uh, the great things that they're doing with OER in their areas. Okay. Thank you, Amy. 
I, I, yeah. I didn't know if I, I didn't hear you, but so that's okay. what we like to talk over each other. So um, thank you so much. We're just going to go through our journey um, from what we call our first date, um, <laughs> how we kind of got to know each other. Um, and it was, it was, is it gradual? Like we kept seeing each other in the same circles <laughs> um, and then to now. So um, yeah, I hope you sit back have a few things we'll we're happy to answer questions um as we get along here and uh would love to you know do whatever we can okay so how we actually met what we share we just share about everything but uh i i'll share with you that i met gina's microsite before i met gina <laughs> i actually started um at a common core state um, meeting and heard about the OER and so forth, got very interested in that. And from one person to the next, making contacts and so forth, then I uh, found quite a bit of information on OER and then decided to pursue a microsite for the Virgin Islands. In my pursuit of that microsite, I used Michigan State as my go-to. That's where I went for anything and everything microsite. I used um, also some of Washington's hub, but everything for me, just about everyone who was involved with this process on the local level, they actually knew about Michigan because that's where I went to beg, borrow, and thief. <laughs> That's a special way of saying steal. It's stealing with um, the connotations and what's not. I went everywhere to Michigan. And that's how I got into the, the microsite, took what I wanted from there to build out the microsite. Some of my colleagues who helped with that building process are here this evening. And I thank them for being here. But then I started seeing Michigan, Gina, on several virtual sessions, because by now we're into the, the pandemic. And as I saw Gina, I'm like, oh, you're the person I've been stealing from. <laughs> and there we just got into conversations. I did follow up, we met, and now we are like inseparable. There is not a week, a two week that goes by that we don't make an attempt to um, have our sessions they're both professional, they include peer mentoring, but they also include self-care. Over to you, Gina. Thank you, yes, absolutely. And um, I think that's what is, is important is no, notice who you are in your OER circles because ultimately, I mean, Yvette and I had been seeing each other in some of the same meetings, doing some of the same things, talking with some of the same people, but actually it was ISKME that I think just really sealed the deal for us. Um, we were both participating in a professional learning committee and um, the chair had to step down and we kind of looked at each other and went, hmm, I don't know if I can take it on alone. And we're like, but maybe we can do it together. And that is really what um, kind of blossomed everything into let's let's meet more often let's learn more from each other and we started learning more from other folks i mean we've learned from oregon and nebraska and washington i mean there are so many more i i i feel bad not saying every one of them but um we meet i mean we love sharing what we know and our experiences and I think that's really, we found that to be so helpful that we knew we had to start making more time to learn from each other. Um, and that really is what it is. It's that that whole educator, lifelong learning, continuing to improve piece. Um, I think we both have that mindset and and just running with it and making it actionable, making it so that we are doing that. Um, so yeah, it's it's really evolved into something um, that you know worth worth sharing with all of you. So we hope that we can connect with you as well. That's great. I, I love that you both really make time intentionally in the week to do that. I think that's unusual. 
Shall I go to the next slide, Jean? Sure. So, I mean, Yvette talks about Go Open Michigan. I, I wasn't the, the beginning of Go Open Michigan. That was Anne Marie Mapes and a, a couple other folks at the department. But because of their work, they created my position. And so I started in June of 2019, not quite a year after Go Open Michigan rolled out. Um, and we were still, we were like in the, the newborn, not even a toddler yet stage of what resources do we want Michigan educators to be able to, to use and what are the important resources that we can pull in. Um, so, you know, setting that, setting those goals, um, my, when I came on board, my personal goal was right there. Every I want every teacher to go to Go Open Michigan and find a resource that they can use in their classroom the next day if they had to. Um, and that's a tall order because when I say every teacher, I mean every curriculum area. And, you know, that's so that not only benefits the Michigan educators, that benefits, you know, USVI, that benefits the, you know, maybe the world. So um, I, I just could see a much bigger impact for everyone. And I love to share. So, um, so those were kind of where we started with Go Open Michigan. And I still have that thinking. Like I'm still looking, there's those groups that I'm looking for uh, materials and OER for that just don't have, according to my standards, enough. OER available to them. So we're always keeping our eyes open. Those early learners, that birth to eight, birth to three group, um, you know, where's the OER for some of these other groups? World language, they were coming to me. Where can we find things? So it's it's having that goal and, and continuing to work with it. Yvette, I think you had some things for sure. Go Open yes. US. Yeah, great. Thank you, Gina. Well, for me, my, my biggest goal is to expand and just continue to grow Go Open USVI and embrace it with the entire community. Right now, we focus on the K-12 and the university to some extent, but I want it out in the community. I want it to be the go-to for members of the community as a whole, for parents, homeschool parents, um, board members, um, legislators, no matter whom, I want people to use um, Go Open USVI as that go-to. I am expanding it through weekly visits to schools. I do I travel across districts and I have to travel <laughs> by plane, seaplane to get to the other district. And I do that every week I'm in a school. I just sit there I'm during the teacher's planning. They come to me and that more intimate interaction with teachers has been very helpful as opposed to a virtual session that you just try to throw everything at them that has been working so that's definitely a goal to continue those visits I also want to transition from curation to creation and encourage more of open author where, where teachers educators as a whole can um, upload their own work their own lesson plans their own unit plans and so forth so that's definitely a goal of mine to facilitate and definitely encourage that and then for me a big goal is to shift that mindset regarding textbook adoption we still and I'm in the heart of textbook adoption with all its challenges and its struggles so this is personal for me and where teachers can see that yes we we have a seven-year textbook adoption or a six-year textbook adoption whatever but throughout the, the course of this new adoption I want them to see that they can move away from this holy soul adoption textbooks and create their own resources and also curate what they need right from go open usvi and other such microsites and hubs so that's my goal great great to hear about each of your ecosystems i know they're they're distinct but they have they have a lot in common so i'll let you talk a bit more about that yeah, and Yvette mentioned, I mean, mindset. And I think that's something worth reiterating is that 
moving traditional educators into OER thinking can be a really hard shift sometimes. Don't give up. <laughs> Keep going back and and re-educating and, and doing that. I, I'm actually I, I say that because I'm doing that with a group um of my own coworkers right now that um that shift is, was a little hard. And it is. It's a it's a difference in mindset. Uh, some folks will catch on fairly quickly, but others it takes time to marinate. And so thank you for mentioning the mindset piece of that. That was super helpful. Um, one of the um, pieces that to Go Open Michigan did. So we in, I inherited a Go Open Michigan and we had 10 or 11,000 resources in it. That was great. What a great start, I thought. But what we were finding is as we were starting to do some training is a lot of our resources, um, we may have stolen from somebody else, probably some, maybe some people on the call today. Um, but really I thought, can you really steal OER? Um, so, but they were, they weren't aligned to standards. And in order, that was the first thing that, the first question I was getting from other folks, like, well, you've got resources, but are they aligned to standards? And I'm like, that's a great question. Um, so we spent some time and made a a summer project called, and we called it a uh, resource alignment tracking group. And we made a whole group on the back end of our microsite just for resource alignment tracking. Um, we tagged our Go Open strategy team that I meet with now about three times, three or four times a year. And we, I made groups, actually it was a hub. So we made groups within the hub for each content area. And within those content areas, as folks signed up for the professional development opportunity, they got um, what we call in Michigan sketches or continuing education units as most states have. Um, and they also got paid. So between getting sketches to do the learning about OER because we were developing them professionally by teaching them and they had to go through like the OER course, and then we were aligning them to groups based on their um, professional content area that they were certified in. So we would assign them to a group based on their um, teaching assignments and they would go through those resources and we just keyword search, dumping a bunch of resources in those groups for them. And they would go through and align them to Michigan standards. Now, a lot of them found once they went to the resource, they were already aligned to common core standards, but the tag for the Michigan standard was a little different. So, but really it was the same. So, um, so they aligned everything. And in one summer, literally in three weeks work, we aligned almost 10,000 resources. We had like, we went from 10 to 90% standard aligned resources within our microsite. I never knew, I could have, couldn't have imagined it was gonna have that much success. But the, the thing that we really liked was we worked with ISKME on the back end of that and we were able, so a couple things changed. One, we were the pilot of being able to align to multiple standards. So once your teachers go to align something, a resource in a microsite, once they get down to that final piece of the standard, there's there's like a one, two, or three, or four, or an A or B, they could choose more than one standard. And it wasn't that way prior to um, that work. So they we were tested. We love being guinea pigs. Um, so we we kind of showed that yes, this can be done. It was super successful. Um, and we just we just had a super great time proving that this was done and we could do it within the microsite and then get reports. So that was the other bonus that we could just print out reports and we could tell the teachers which resources they aligned, which standards they aligned to them if they really wanted to know. Um, but it was so helpful in all of that work and we would have never gotten it done without the cooperation of everyone. But Yvette, I'm a little jealous. You have <laughs> another special project in your microsite 
that again, I'm jealous. It's phenomenal. <laughs> so I hope you share. Let's let's hear about your your project. Okay, great. Thank you, Gina. But um, I am taken from Gina because, like I told you, we I beg, borrow, and teeth. I'm taken from Gina that whole idea around the standards alignment. We do have some alignment done because we did go through a. Uh, review academy, a curriculum review academy with led by ISKME. And so some of the standards are aligned both to the common core state standards in ELA, in the case of ELA and math, as well as to the Virgin Islands standards of achievement, because ISKME did that in the back end. So some of the resources that came up through the, that curriculum review academy are already aligned, but I need to get to that 90% that um, Gina is talking about. So that's how we, we support. But what Gina is asking me to share is our core, we call it our heart, where we, the core for us means where curriculum meets open educational resources. And the idea is to put forward that curriculum is the heart, the heartbeat of our department. And so that's what we want um, that, that to be picked up and run with. And so, for our core, we develop a hub, a special hub. And within that hub, we created collections around the content areas. So for every content area we have at VIDE, there is a collection named accordingly. And within that collection, we have uploaded our standards, whether they are the national or the Virgin Islands um, standards of achievement that have already transitioned, or we've also allowed, or I should say, in addition, we've uploaded curriculum and uh, we've also uploaded resources that will support curriculum. So you have some resources such as matter balance and so forth that are in some of the, the, the content area collections. The idea here for us is to put as many resources as possible in this particular location, our core. I tell teachers when I do the, the presentations, in the past, we had that binder, that old plastic three ring binder that had the three rings in there and the rings got rusty and the pages got kind of um, like parchment because we used it for so long. Well, this core hub is our electronic curriculum binder. Everything is located there and it, it continues to grow. So those resources are, are located there and they can go right there and find their curriculum. And it also encourages integration across content area because whether it's math or science, social studies, ELA, health and physical education, every teacher has every other teacher subject matter right there and available. And then they have the entire microsite of resources to support those standards and that curriculum. And so that's what we have built out. That's that special project that we've added. We are happy to share it with others. I've been doing the professional development on it. I do on-site professional development, as I indicated, or I do it virtually. I've worked with coordinators, administrators. I go school by school. I've shared with the Board of Education. If you listen, I will share it. All right. And one thing I wanted to also um, kind of, I, I had my bullet point for curriculum support for incarcerated individuals. This was an oversight on the part of our strategy team. Um, we knew that some of our intermediate school district folks were supporting um, teachers that were working with juveniles that were incarcerated and adults that were incarcerated. And it was actually a coworker that knew a little bit about Go Open Michigan, but uh, approached me and had a question. And her mom, who was a retired teacher, was working with some incarcerated adults and was having a really hard time finding information about a very specific subject. And um, she told her mom to go look at in Go Open Michigan. And it was like a, a whole brand new book opened up for her mother. She said that was the greatest resource that folks had given her. And, and so we've also found that um, we've expanded into um, sharing our, our OER platform and making sure folks know about it in the adult education world. 
which also includes adult educators who are working with refugees coming into our state. Um, that was another piece that had been overlooked, but if they're learning the language, sometimes getting easier resources for them to learn the language in has been super helpful. So we're finding things, um, I would say beyond K-12, but yet they're in that K-12 realm that aren't always thought of first. So I just wanted to make sure that we shared that piece as well. That's great. Yes, thank you uh, both for outlining the uh, impressive way that your, your states have a top-down vision for OER and then the strategies to carry those out that in, really include reaching out to the community to, to, to be very comprehensive about who knows about OER and your microsites and can access them. So that's, that's really uh, great to hear. So some of the Go Open Michigan um, feature, what I would say would be featured hubs or collections that just to kind of get those thinking juices going um, for other folks, um, you can see some of that. So the uh, Future Proud Michigan Educator, this is an initiative um, we have um, some legislation around grow your own and trying to get those folks that may, may be interested in teaching, they may be in education, but they don't have their teaching certification yet. Um, Future Proud Michigan Educator is a Michigan Department of Education initiative, and they didn't know where to land. They had all this, they had curriculum, they had ideas that they were sharing with districts, and they just didn't know the best place to put it. And our website, can be a little hard to find things once in a while. Um, so I actually, I saw the, the Future Proud Michigan Educator stuff on like the news one night and I went, hey, huh. next day I get into work and I call the gal and I said, do you need a place for this? I, I have this really great idea if you, if you could make it OER. And so that was a learning opportunity that we took advantage of. They have a collection. Um, so now they have a place to live and share and, you know, go from there. We have our Michigan textbook collection. We had a big grant, wrote all these social studies textbooks for K-12 and made them OER. They're all openly licensed. We share them far and wide um, and make them your own because the, we love to share. Um, we have our our computational thinking so mm -hmm. many so many words in my head um our computational thinking we've started to do some work around computational thinking and how we can introduce those um those premises into like the k-5 area um i don't know if any of you have ever tried to approach a k-5 educator and say would you like to integrate computer science in your class and you got the look of death <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it <laughs> and they're like not nah, one more thing please things are hard enough so we're we're looking and doing some research around is computational thinking a better way to integrate those computer science ish initiatives into the k-5 curriculum in ela math science music um, anywhere we can. So that's that's one of our newer initiatives that we're kind of making those collections around. So I know Yvette has some pretty awesome collections too. We talk hey, a lot about them. Yes, definitely. And one is a, a, a featured hub is our ESOL hub. And this is supported, facilitated. She lives on this hub. Um, she's on the webinar this evening. That's Dr. Sally Camacho. She's our bilingual education director, but I call her Dr. Sally. She has been helping to carry out the work of this microsite as a whole, helping to build it. And she does so primarily through the ESOL hub. It's a fabulous hub. Um, of course, everything is wide open, so you can go in and take a look at it. Um, but it, Sally, Dr. Sally has provided resources for teachers who 
have English learners in their classes. I notice I say teachers who have English learners in their classes because her resources are for all teachers, not just ESL teachers. She has provided the law that supports, um, that was recently passed in the Virgin Islands um, for ESOL. She has um, provided the uh, information from USDE around English learners. She's provided information for parents, the, um, the uh, what's it called, her resources include letters, it includes pictures of what's happening actually in some of these classes, there's a policy and procedures manual, and then you get to the resources, there are even webinars that were done that involve the content area teachers that we did work with another um, vendor, well, another um, set of critical friends, the REL, and those are available on this hub as well. And so when you go through it, it's so alive, it's so vibrant, it is so open and so current that it's amazing. And she just keeps it going. The other hub that I really just wanna talk about quickly is the hub for Virgin Islands history and culture. Our state director for cultural education, she, started this hub and keeps it going as well. Here's where we have a variety of resources that uh, focus on Virgin Islands history and culture. And the idea here is to continue to celebrate that history and that culture throughout all classes. She also has a Kalaloo framework, the Kalaloo framework, focuses on the standards for the Virgin Islands standards for um, culture, cultural standards. And that is in her hub as well. Um, it's also in our core curriculum hub. And so the idea here is to celebrate the Virgin Islands culture, definitely recognize it, celebrate it, continue that going, and also to instill it in our students so that they can continue it on while at the same time, showing that tolerance for other cultures as well. And so those two hubs are continuing to grow and by their growth, they're growing the site as, well, as a whole. And we have some others that are coming on board. And so we're looking forward to that. Of course, Gina being my go-to, I share everything with her firsthand. We talk about what's coming. She shares her ideas. If I need anything like that, Gina provides it. It's amazing. And so that's how we continue this peer mentoring um, through open educational resources. The next slide. Sure. Okay. So we've been wanting to, to definitely recognize some of the others who've been on our journey. Um, Gina indicated that a little earlier on, but, um, and I mentioned CCSSO as that starting point. And uh, that first meeting at CCSSO where I was introduced to open educational resources, I was then led to Sarah Trenton, who was in the Department of Education and um, Amy shared that background um, initial, initially. And then Sarah turned me over to Sean Nash, and Jeanette Westfall, and uh, they're from Liberty, I think it's a Liberty education, um, state education. Um, they are phenomenal. And I met Amy. And uh, I remember when I, when I brought Gina, Jeanette to a session for VIDE to bring our educators um, to the table to hear more about open educational resources. One of our coordinators who's on right now, Ms. Krosky, she sent me a text and said, oh, Dr. McMahon Arnold, that session was delicious. <laughs> That's how she described it. And so we are continuing to hopefully um, stir the pot. And we've done so to um, the work with Amy and ISMI as a whole. ISMI has been phenomenal. ISMI did not build, help us build a product and walk away. And that's one of the things I share with anyone who asks about open educational resources and about our microsite. 
because ISMI has stayed with us, continues to do so. It's a matter of hours before we get a response to anything. Sometimes it's right away, but ISMI has supported us to professional development, to building out the site, to ongoing um, webinars of this nature and so forth. We are very thankful for that. We've also had some support from um, Barbara Suit in Washington and Vanessa Clark. Um, Gina, tell me where Vanessa is from again. Oregon. 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 Okay, that's right. That's Oregon. And then it's Gina and Yvette as we continue to support each other. But I also want to just recognize those colleagues of mine who are here. Um, the, we have a team from our three CC. They're supported by um, U.S. Department of Education and a comprehensive center. They are supportive in every which way. And they were there with me along the way, every step of the way, as I built out the microsite with ISKME, weekly meetings, they were there and they continue to be there to support. They're on here tonight and I just wanna recognize those colleagues of mine from R3CC and Dr. Sally and Ms. Krosky, mm -hmm. my go-to. Um, Gina knows them now. She definitely knows Dr. Sally because sometimes I get something from Gina and it is so delicious that I say, Dr. Sally, look what I just got. <laughs> and I share it with her. And in two minutes, Dr. Sally is running with it. It's on the microsite, it's on her hub and she's talking about it and so forth. And so what we do, the, the work that we do here, Gina and me, as we continue to build out um, our sites, we're actually building each other, helping to build and support each other through a friendship. It's a professional friendship, but it's also become a personal one as well. And if you don't mind, Gina, I will just share with the group here that it our friendship has strengthened through this interaction through the microsite, through our understanding and our love, our growing love for open educational resources, that Gina came through St. Thomas, um, the sister island, on a cruise back in October. And I flew to St. Thomas that day, worked on St. Thomas, <laughs> actually, and just so that I could see her and spend some time with her. And, and that's important. That was important to help to build our relationship. Definitely that love mm -hmm. right there. Okay. Uh -huh. And yeah. so we, and as much as it rained that day, it didn't matter. We went out in the rain so we could meet each other. And, and that's important. And then Gina has shared that on her cell phone, her um, screen um, screensaver is actually a picture of the St. Thomas Harbor as she was pulling out. And so we, we keep, the work keeps us going, but the work has also created an opportunity for us to grow personally, professionally. If a week, if we are not able to meet on a Friday, we meet every second Friday. And if we're not able to meet on a Friday, we cannot go till the next two Fridays. We have to meet the following week, another weekday, because that's how we support each other. Gina, you wanna add anything to that? <laughs> well, what you forgot Yvette was, Yvette was on a cruise the end of January and she was still on the boat on a fri for a Friday call and she called me from the boat <laughs> so that we wouldn't miss our meeting. and. Um, that's just, that's where it's gone. I mean, that's where it's evolved. So, um, so you just never know. So um, some of these tips that we definitely want to share is don't be afraid to reach out to the other colleagues in the other states. Um, OER folks are people that love to share. This is not, you know, just us. This is, it's in the spirit of OER and education. So. Um, there's definitely that. Don't be afraid to reach out. Um, and like Amy mentioned earlier, do so intentionally. When you find something and find that connection, keep intentionally make time in your calendar. That I th that was a really, really big step for us when we said, you know, we just need to meet every couple of weeks. And um, sometimes it ends up being a little more self-care because one of us will have had one of those weeks. Um, and, and just, you just need another colleague to listen and support and 
give some feedback or a different way of thinking or looking at something. We do that for each other. And that was, we never intended that that's what we needed. So, um, and also I wanted to jump down to customize what you learn. I know that I get pulled into a lot of different OER groups and a lot of times a lot of higher ed folks are in it. We have a my OER group in the state of Michigan. I'm the only K-12 person in the group. Everybody else is higher ed. Um, the implementations are different for higher ed and for K-12, but we can learn from higher ed. They they are they're they've got that academic lens, and there are definitely pieces that we can learn and take from them. And you never know when you're going to get that golden nugget. So listen intently and um, don't think, don't ever think it's a waste of time because it it's not. And it's, you'll learn something that will kind of close that circle and make it whole. And then something will uh, incredible will happen. Um, so always be looking for those nuggets. Um, Yvette, I know you you have a couple things here. Yeah. Just a couple of things, really. Um, that reaching out to other colleagues and states, definitely I want to underscore that. And I'll share that with um, something that happened very recently. I got an email from one of our other consultants from AIR, and she said, um, I want to introduce you to someone from the State Department of New Mexico. And so we made the contact and uh, Dr. Roxanne, I forgot Dr. Roxanne's last name, forgive me. Um, she wanted to talk with me about my journey on OER and developing a microsite. And so we had a half hour meeting scheduled. And I think when we got off, it was two hours. Two hours had passed. And we just talked about the entire journey. We talked about what you can expect. We talked about the time that went into it talked about the microsite um, in terms of the core and all the other different things that we shared here tonight. She just took it all in. And then I met with Gina the next day and I'm sharing with Gina. I said, Gina, guess what? I talked with the State Department of New Mexico yesterday and what's that and what's that, man? The thing was almost two hours. She said, I did too. I spoke with her as well and it was two hours. So I invited her here this evening. So I'm hoping that she's on. I told her she can definitely join us and then we can do another follow-up if she so desires because anything to help another state, just as I was helped through uh, Michigan, I am more than willing to do that. And uh, we talk about beg, borrow, and tiffin. Um, it's like I, I sh I've shared with Gina, there may be times when, uh, you know how as educators, we go somewhere, no matter where it is, could be a doctor's office, somewhere that we see some resource that we can use with our students. Sometimes we ask nicely, may I have this magazine to take back to my classes or so forth? Sometimes we just kind of tear the pages out, you know, we just teeth it because our students need it more. That's how we feel. And so that's um, one of the things I want to share with those on the call this evening to, you know, if you see uh, something from a particular microsite that you like, if you see particular resources, you know, you can beg, you can borrow and do as I do so well, teeth. Uh, yesterday, I went to a school and I was working with the teachers and one of the teachers came up after and she said, she asked, do you have anything for AVID, AVID strategies, I'm the AVID teacher and so forth. I said, let's check didn't find anything. And so I started a group for her right there, just created the group instantly in front of her and said, okay, so here we have a group. This is where you can invite your avid teachers. We will start looking for resources and so forth. Once we look at the licenses and those attributes as to how we can use them and um, display them, then we can put these up so your teachers, your avid teachers can have access to them. And that's how we just build this out. So don't be afraid, whatever you, your thoughts may, if you think you can you see something from another state, feel free to reach out. I don't know how many states I've spoken to over the last two years about their process, about their resources. And the one thing I'll end with, all the other states, they are so happy to share 
I can't stress that enough. They share whatever they have. I remember one time I was talking to Gina about um, resources for health and physical education. And by the end of the call, I had a whole spreadsheet ready to just upload um, into our microsite. That's how our work just continues to grow and reach others. And we want others to benefit from that as well. Hey, back to you. Thank you so much. We have some time for questions. People can either unmute or put it in the chat, but it's uh, just been such a pleasure to hear about your OER journey, though, you know, long and never easy. It, it, it's not done alone. OER is meant to be done with other people whether it's in your states and districts or across states and districts. And that's really what the Go Open Network, uh, why we exist is to support that kind of sharing. And, and sharing leads to innovation. It leads to teacher engagement and satisfaction. So there's just so many benefits from doing that. Let's see if we have any questions. Don't be shy to, uh, to just ask what's on your mind. Oh, even if it's a comment, Amy. Yeah, a comment. Ah, there's Barbara. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Guys, it's so nice to see you. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Um, so uh, I have to admit, uh, you, you said the health and physical education, and my ears perked up because I'm always looking for those resources. We, uh, we have those in short supply. <laughs> so... Uh, are they just on your hub under under health and physical education? Is that the place where you would go to to take a look? Gina, the same same for your site as well. Okay, they are on the they are on the collections on our site. When okay. you go to the um, the tab, the Discover tab, and on the collections, it says um, health and physical education. But while they may say go open U.S. Virgin Islands, they came wholesale. <laughs> awesome. I will take a closer look because we are uh, we're in need of those. So thank you guys for here. Yeah, sure, you. sure. Happy to have you. Uh, anyone that wants to get help in sharing collections or resources. Uh, yes, please. Please do reach our our speakers or or get in touch with us. Me. Okay, there's a okay hand I see a hand up. Are you able to unmute? And hello. Hello. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead. Okay. My my question is on um, the sustainability of um, of these uh, platforms. Are the government backing these platforms, or there are other sustainability um, um, uh, uh, means of um, maintaining such platforms? Because normally, um, um, presently, I can say that one of the greatest or the biggest problem of um, OER movement is this issue of um, sustainability. Mm -hmm. Now, people are talking about raising, or I'm, I'm talking from the perspective of um, higher education now, people are talking from the perspective of uh, the, the developing students to be OER develop OER creators on their own. Mm -hmm. if, if we are doing that, that means we are building future OER developers. That is a sign of a, um, uh, a means of um, uh, sustainability for, the, for OER movement. But talking about the, the uh, K-12 now, is there anything that, 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 that the presenters can tell us about the sustainability of, of, of these platforms? I love your question. Um, so I can I can answer briefly for Go Open Michigan. So I know our our repository, our microsite, is, really does focus mostly on the teachers and um, giving resources to teachers to use in their classrooms. I love the my my wish. One of my goals is to have. I mean, our platform is wide open. Um, and I'll explain that in just a second, but I would love for students to be able to share their creations. And in our platform, um, 
it's a little scary. And again, we're going to go back to that word of mind shift. Um, our platform is totally open, uh, which educators have a hard time with. They're like, anybody can get an account? Yes. Anybody can add a resource? Yes. It, it, it is scary, um, but at the same time, what is open if it's not open? I think that, that's, that's Gina's thinking, um, but I, I know that not everybody gets there. And if we run into trouble um, that we have before, we've had pirated videos added to our platform and we take them down. So um, I, I hope that answers some of your question. I don't know, maybe Amy and Yvette, you have a different mm -hmm. take on that. Okay, I'll just say quickly, um, opposite to Gina when it comes to that, our site is not totally open. In fact, I contradict them, the contradiction in open when it comes to that, because our site is still fairly new and I am afraid to open it up so quickly. And so right now it's open to our educators at the Virgin Islands Department of Education, as well as to the University of the Virgin Islands. They're the ones who can create um, um accounts at this point and utilize it to its fullest. But we use also, you're talking about sustainability, Google Analytics. We use the Google Analytics to, to look at engagement, to determine whether the site is growing. We look at who is accessing the site and from where. We look at what time, what devices they're using and what's um, pages they're frequenting and so that helps with the sustainability because right now while it's funded as a supplemental resource my desire is to see it funded through the government as a whole because it's recognized as a resource that serves the entire community and not just the Virgin Islands Department of Education. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that question. Sustainability is is really key. And we are hearing from presenters whose, whose states really have made a commitment at the top that OER is important to the education field. Not every state has done that. Uh, ISME works with at least 25 states that are making a commitment and building tools and, and collections for educators to get involved with providing professional learning, providing uh, support to ask questions and build skills but not every state is doing that it's not necessarily a, a k-12 federal initiative yet and uh there's always new opportunities and new funding the um of course the new administration is supporting the idea of oer with a lot of federal funding for uh educators uh to close the the gaps that came up during the, the pandemic to support teacher uh, continual skill, to support digital equity. So there's lots of ways that OER may not be mentioned specifically, but it could be integrated into policies and budget allocations to be a solution, to be a more comprehensive solution. So we might only have a, a minute or so left. So I wanted to make sure to uh, add the uh, the links that you can find us to continue this conversation to join the hub as i mentioned and find us on linkedin and twitter and join our newsletter so you can continue to get updates send us email send uh, go open email info at goopen.us and please do stay in touch because this is not um, an easy journey, and uh, it, it takes colleagues like Yvette and Gina to to make it such an enjoyable and supportive process. So thank you to both of you and everyone that's been here. Thank you, Amy, Gina. I'll see you on our next session. And thank you, everyone, for being here thank this you, evening. Everybody. Okay, thanks, Enjoy. you guys. Enjoy Bye. the rest of your Valentine's Day and Bye. stay positive. Bye. Good night. <laughs> Good night, all. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye.